In this video, I am going to help you decide whether you should start a newsletter for your online business or a blog for your online business. Okay, let's get started. Before we go any further, we have to define the difference between a newsletter and a blog. It's harder and harder to tell the difference these days because platforms like Substack and more recently platforms like Beehive have been introduced. And although those are newsletter platforms, they also come with the functionality of, of a website. So as you publish your newsletter, they get posted basically like a WordPress blog does. But that doesn't mean that Substack and Beehive serve the same functionality as a more traditional website, like, like a WordPress site that we consider a blog. So even though it's difficult to tell the difference, I like to define these two via what their functionality is. So th this is how you tell the difference. A newsletter is designed to entertain and to build your authority in a space, whereas a blog is designed to inform and designed to create more direct calls to action for sales. Okay, so what exactly does that mean? Uh, just remember, newsletters are for entertaining, blogs are for selling and informing. So let's look at some examples and we can really tell the difference between the two. Okay, as always, I like to start with examples of my own website so that you guys can see that I'm really practicing what I preach. So this is Stadzi, this is my agency site, and this is a blog. All of the content that is published on this website is published for the sole purpose of generating traffic that ranks for a certain keyword. And I only write articles that rank for a keyword that I know are in relation to somebody that wants to hire me, that, that wants to buy my services or in some cases my products. So a good example of this is uh, uh, right here, this page. So for those of you that don't know, Stadzi is a SEO agency. We're a lead generation agency that works specifically within the behavioral healthcare field and drug rehab centers are, are a client of ours. So this particular article, I would never send this article out as an email. It's too dry, it's too informative. But the purpose of this article is because when people are searching for drug rehab marketing services, they will find this article. And just to prove it to you, you know, you can see right here. So if, if I search drug rehab marketing, I'm, I'm on the first page somewhere. Okay, so I dropped down a couple spots. I'm number five, right? And so if somebody goes to Google and they search drug rehab marketing, they're gonna find this article. And when they're on this article, the intent, like they're, the reason that they're on this website is so clear because of what they search. They're looking for a drug rehab marketing agency. And so my blog is designed to inform. And since the purpose is to inform and I'm teaching, I can sprinkle the calls to action in this content much more clearly and, and much more um, like specifically because I, I'm, I can really, really appeal to them and try to sell them to book an appointment with me. So that's why the calls to action in this website um, are, are, are so clear. And even right here, uh, you can click this link and, and book an appointment. And this is where I generate a vast majority of, of the business for Stasi. Okay, now let's compare that to a newsletter. Well, I've actually recently just started a newsletter in this space. I, I published this yesterday. Actually, it's called The Census, and it's a weekly newsletter uh, designed to help marketers and entrepreneurs who are looking to grow in the behavioral healthcare industry. So if you look at the difference between this content and this content, this content is timely and it's more entertaining. Like sure, the material in the behavioral healthcare field might be drier, right? It's not like full of celebrities and it's not very funny, but it's it's new, it's news, it's timely. It, it's, it's entertaining. People that are in the behavioral healthcare space want to know these stories. Whereas this isn't very informative. Like I'm not teaching somebody how I would actually perform the skills for them in the same way that I would be an article. And that's why in this article, the calls to action are so much more specific and are so much more targeted. Whereas this, I'm just building a list. I'm, I'm constantly putting resources in front of people and I'm establishing myself as an authority in this space. So yes, I will get clients from this newsletter, but it's not gonna be as, as linear, right? They're not gonna subscribe and then instantly call me to hire me. It's, it's much more through reputation building. And so that's why it's really important to define the difference between the two. Blogs are for informing, newsletters are for entertaining. Uh, okay, so let's look at another example. So this is HubSpot.com. This is a huge business 
And the HubSpot blog is really legendary within SEO just because of how good it is and how much traffic they get. Uh, last time I checked the HubSpot blog, I'm not, I can find it right here. Okay. Um, the HubSpot blog generates like 13 million hits a month, which is insane. And all of these articles, I'll move this to the side. Uh, like I said, they're so targeted and they're so informative. You're teaching people who potentially want to buy your product or services through your blog. So the analogy is a little bit different because HubSpot isn't a service in the way that my agency is. It's, it's much more of a software product, but the lesson still applies. All of this content is very, very informative. And that's why the calls to action within this content are so much more direct. So everywhere you go, there's this button up here where you can book a demo for the product and that's gonna follow you everywhere through the website. And then even the calls to action within the article itself, they're, uh, they're just much more targeted towards the, the potential buyer. So there's, they, they have this site-wide CTA up here and especially if I'm on mobile, right? Like this is gonna, this is gonna follow me throughout. And so they don't, you don't need to necessarily sprinkle this in into the content the same way that they would. And so HubSpot chooses to to download, to give away free eBooks and free reports. And if I were to sign up for an email list through the HubSpot blog, I wouldn't be given an entertaining newsletter. I would be served sales emails. And there's a big difference between the two. I actually did a whole video about this. This exact topic is a very important topic. You can uh, see that video in the description. You can click that link. You can see that video in the description of this video. So click that link to learn the difference between newsletters and sales emails. But it's very important. So nonetheless, this is informative content. Whereas the hustle, which is the, the daily newsletter that HubSpot owns, this, this serves a different purpose. This is entertaining. Nobody's going to sign up for the hustle thinking to themselves, man, I really need a new CRM. I really need HubSpot software. Let me learn about it on the hustle. But that doesn't mean that the Hustle newsletter isn't a good marketing channel for HubSpot. And that's why if, if you look at the newsletter, you can see that the calls to action are just much more subtle, right? So they actually have a call to action, which brings people back to the HubSpot blog, right? They know that the, the end user is similar. You wouldn't be reading the Hustle if you weren't into tech and sales and, and scaling online businesses. And so obviously the end user applies to the product that HubSpot sells, but the cost of action is just much more subtle. Um, you can see the same thing right here, build your business identity. This is like a HubSpot guide. This button doesn't work for some reason. Uh, if that button did work, you would see another example about just how much more subtle the calls to action are. Let me see if I can find another newsletter actually, because I, I would really like that button to work where you can just see an example of a more subtle call to action. Okay, well, here's a perfect one. Uh, HubSpot does a conference, it's called Inbound every month, and they are promoting the streams to Inbound. So you can watch the stream here. This is a perfect example. This isn't a direct call to action to buy the HubSpot product, but it's, it's a more subtle call to action to bring people into the HubSpot ecosystem. So once again, the HubSpot blog is for informing the Hustle newsletter, basically HubSpot's newsletter, is for entertaining. And the calls to action on the blog are direct. The calls to action in the newsletter are subtle. And I'll even show Copyblogger, my own, my, my other website, as an example of this. All of the articles are super informative. And if you read the articles, if you go to the blog, the calls to action are super direct. So I sprinkle these calls to action for the digitalcommerce.com. SEO agency within the content. And if, if you click on this button, you're going to be served a, a lead generation form. Like basically fill this out and we'll call you and you should hire us, right? It's a very, very direct call to action. But that's okay because you wouldn't be reading this content if you weren't trying to be informed and you weren't trying to learn ways that you can grow your business. And so this is a perfect opportunity where we know the intention is aligned. If somebody's reading this, they're probably a potential client for us. So that's why the calls to action within this content are so much more direct. And I think there's a, I think there's another one. Maybe not. You don't have to watch me scroll the whole time. Okay. So there's just one, con there's just one call to action at the top of the article. Now let's look at the copy blogger newsletter. Well, it's subtle. 
The newsletter entertains. It brings you relevant information that you can use this week that you didn't know the week before. And so that's why the newsletter brings you to the most recent article for Copyblogger. Same thing that we saw in The Hustle and that we saw in HubSpot, right? It's, it's, it's a call to action that's subtle. I'm funneling that attention and that traffic back towards my services because there's the direct call to action. Uh, well, now there's a, a new podcast episode. Okay, great. So you, you check out the podcast episode, you could become a subscriber, you can learn more about us. Uh, you know, maybe you check out the sponsors. Hey, what do you know? Digital Commerce is also a sponsor of the podcast. And so we're building an audience. We're, we're building a reputation in the space. Um, here's an ad. Here's the video, right? Like you, you probably watched this video through the newsletter. And so if you're watching this video right now, you most likely found it through the newsletter. Um, and then here's, again, more of a subtle call to action for the Copyblogger Academy. I, I give people like a, a weekly breakdown about what the, the week's lesson in the Academy are. I give you a link to it. If you are a member and you click this link, you'll go right to the masterclass as obviously I am a member of the Copyblogger Academy because you know I own it. But if you don't, then there's a subtle link to join the Copyblogger Academy and you can sign up to this link here and, and, and check it out for yourself. So again, like I'm really practicing what I preach here. They're, they're, even though blogs these days look similar to newsletters, there's still a very, very important distinction. And that distinction is in the functionality of the two. So what do you do? You want to start an online business. What do you do? Well, I still think blogs are better. And I know a lot of people disagree with me on this, but blogs are better sales mechanisms. I think that the bang for your buck is going to be in writing informative, long-form content that is going to solve the problem of your potential buyers. And you can still perform this function with the newsletter, but you have to build a much bigger audience and you have to build yourself as, as a brand because in the newsletter, since it's entertaining, you can't have the direct calls to action in a blog the, the same way that you can in a newsletter. People just aren't going to, they're just not going to be about it. That's not why they signed up for the newsletter. Whereas the reason that they got to your blog in the first place was because they're interested in what it is that you offer. So there's a, there's a catch 22 here, right? Newsletters usually grow a little bit faster. Um, a newsletter, you can build a much more direct relationship with your audience and that relationship, the value of that relationship definitely compounds over time. So if you get big enough, right, a newsletter can be extremely valuable. And I've, I've learned this myself through my Tim Stiles newsletter and the copy blogger newsletter, which is the whole reason I started the census in the first place, because I know there's going to be value in a newsletter that will align with the goals of Stasi. But one hit to my Stasi site is worth, I don't know, probably 5,000 times more than a hit to my newsletter. I only get about 50 hits a day to my Stasi site, but that site generates, geez, I don't know, $50,000 a month worth of traffic. And not not like pretend value, like actual cash money. Like that's how much money the blog generates. Whereas if I'm going to be doing $50,000 a month for the census, I'm probably going to need to have an email list and a newsletter of like half a million people. So do you see the difference? Newsletters are great. And newsletters are a great way to get started. And if that's what you want to do, I fully encourage you to do it. I love my newsletters. I love the newsletter space. But if you want to build a business and you want to write content that's going to generate to real sales, I recommend going to WordPress, downloading a WordPress theme, uploading it onto a server, and starting with a WordPress blog. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to watch that other video about the difference between newsletters and sales emails, uh, click the link in the description. Also, there's a free ebook in the description about how to uh, generate multiple streams of income. You can click that link in the description and sign up for that. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Please like, please subscribe. I'll talk to you next week. Peace.